This is Alexis Garza. She's a ninth grader at Heritage. She has an amazing story that she'd like to share with you. And it's not just to inspire us adults, but it's also to inspire her peers. So, Ms. Alexis. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alexis. Um, yes, I'm a freshman at Heritage. And I want to tell you guys a story that you probably wouldn't expect. So, I think it started, I think, the beginning of junior high. You know how everybody always says, oh, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you go through it. I'm going to get you to go the right direction. To me, it sounds the same. To me, it was like, OK, you told me this, you told me this, you told me this, but it never happened. I was always going the wrong direction. I started getting into fights. I mean, my mom, she, she wasn't there for me. Like, everybody has parents, and everybody has their own way of showing affection to their kids. I didn't have that. Me and my mom aren't close. Even to this day, we aren't close. But she always would tell me ugly things and would make me feel bad about myself. So I thought I was doing everything wrong. She abused me physically for since I was born, maybe, and emotionally right when I started hitting my teenage years. My dad is on drugs, or was. He's getting recovery. He's in rehab right now. He, we haven't been with him for almost a year, and I'm just glad that he's getting better. I think I was most upset because every day, every day I would wake up and my parents wouldn't tell me they loved me before I left to school. They wouldn't kiss me on the cheek like everybody else's parents would. They wouldn't say, I love you, I'm here for you. I'm, me and my mom, we just, we don't, we don't click. So I started acting out in ways that nobody should act out, but it happened. I started fighting with girls. I started just acting out completely wrong. I was trying out different drugs. I just, I, it was, it was bad. <clears throat> um, I think eighth grade years, whenever I started having like suicidal thoughts, like I just, I felt like it was so much better if I just wasn't here. I thought it was better for everybody that if I would just disappear and nobody would make any kind of sound, nobody would just, everybody would be happy I was gone. And I know that feeling and I know nobody in this world deserves to have that feeling. As much as you think you do, you don't. Everybody deserves to be here for one reason or another. And so eighth grade last year in April, I was already getting into, I mean, major fights, like in the streets, at school, everywhere possible, at the mall, everywhere I would go. My mom didn't trust me anywhere, so finally she said, I don't want you in my house anymore. And I knew it was bound to come that she was going to kick me out. So she told me to pack up all my stuff and leave. At first, I thought it was like, oh, okay, she'll get over it. She's mad. I'll just get over it. But she stared at me and told me to get my stuff and leave. So I knew I only had one last option, which was my grandma. And ever since I called my grandma and asked her for help, she's been the most amazing person in my entire life. I want to thank you so much for everything. I know it may not seem like I appreciate everything that you do, but I do completely. And so when I came to here in Midlothian, it was like a blessing. It was completely just, it was unbelievable. It didn't seem like it was real. I came here, everybody was so friendly, everybody's so welcoming. The teachers are so careful and they're just so like, they want to know, they want to know how you are. It's like before, at my old school, it wasn't like that. No teachers cared. They gave you work and just said, do it. Nobody ever taught anything. It wasn't, it wasn't like it was supposed to be. So. I brought a little bit of trouble here to Midlothian in the beginning of the year. Just, I wasn't, I still had a lot of things I was going through. It was a big change for me to move here from that environment. My grandma had rules and I was so desperately needing rules. My mom did not care at all. No matter what I did, just, okay, I don't care, okay. I could be gone for a week and nobody would care. You just walk through the door, okay, go clean your room. I was like, okay. So I came here, I had rules, and I was so glad I had rules. I was so glad I got my phone taken up. I was so glad that I was gonna be grounded at some point. <laughs> as much as it seems like, oh, you're lucky, you don't have rules, it's not like that. I'd rather have parents who care so much than someone who didn't care at all. So I came to Midlothian, and I think it was an administrator who had introduced me into the Movement Toward a Future program. And since I got in this program, I am so happy. Every day I smile more than ever. I come home, I tell my grandma how my day went, and she cares, she listens to me. 
having a mentor is like you're actually being heard. You have undivided attention. You don't, you don't think about, oh, what happens if I get in trouble? Like, you don't even have that thought. I'm going to do good because I want people to be proud of me. To hear my teachers and my grandmother say that they're proud of me is beyond just an amazing feeling to being heard that you're proud. And so when I got into this Movement Forward program, we first, it was a little bit like kind of tough. It was like, okay, I have to open up to someone else again. I've had CPS cases. I've had so many different people try and tell me, we're going to help you. But it never happened. So whenever my mentor, Ms. Jeannie, came and was like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to, we're going to work through this. And I was like, all right, okay, yeah, sure. So we went along. We started talking. I opened up to her, and I told her everything I possibly could. Same with Ms. Petty. I told Ms. Petty everything, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried, because I never opened up to someone so much. And it was just so, I had so much holding it in. Like, these mentors will listen to you. They just, they're amazing. Every single mentor in here, mentee, everyone, we are all greatly appreciated. And whenever you have that, you know someone's listening, you never want to stop talking. It's like, oh my gosh, they're listening to me. They know what I'm saying. They know what I'm feeling. Every day I would go throughout school and just be like, I hope I don't get into a fight today. I hope nothing happens. I hope I stay out of trouble. Before, I could care less. I could be like, if someone looks at me ugly, I'm going to do something. But I don't have that way anymore. I'm so happy where I am. I'm making straight A's. Well, maybe not straight A's, but good grades. <laughs> I don't get into trouble. I keep everything. I do my chores. I do everything. I'm so happy where I'm living. And I don't have that negative kind of feeling anymore. I mean, of course I miss my family, but I think it's better to take care of myself first than come back for them. So I just want to thank Miss Petty, and I want to thank Miss Jeannie, and I want to thank my grandma for everything y'all have done for me. And I hope everybody has an amazing time here. Thank you.